let's read Luke 18. Chapter 18. Verse 9. Verse 9. Just read. Uh, he also told, told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves and were confident that they were righteous, posing outwardly as upright and in right standing with God, and who, who viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple enclosure to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood on stentiously and began praying to himself in a self-righteous way, saying, God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of this man, swindlers, unjust, dishonest, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pray, pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing at a distance, will not even raise his eyes towards heaven, but was striking his chest in humility and repentance, saying, God, be merciful and gracious to me, the especially wicked sinner that I am. Tell you, I tell you, this man went to his home, justified, forgiven of the guilt of sin, and placed in right standing with God, rather than the other men, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbled himself, forsaking self-righteous pride, will be exalted. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want us to look at this word <inaudible> that can really teach us to, <inaudible> to understand our Christian life <inaudible> and how we seek God. If you can see that, as I told you in the beginning, that we need God. We also need the grace of God. Just like the grace of God. We need the grace of God. You can see the man who's justifying himself. This man, when he stood there, he tried to prove that he is a Christian. You know, always we need to know before God that's where we are rated. We are weaned. So this man, when he reaches there, he, he spoke with a very confident, in a confident way. And he forget that he who does not want to move forward speak what he has done. But he who wants to move forward he must find grace. If you want to move forward you must find grace. And this grace must be from God. Because the grace of God does not go by what you have done. But look at this sinner. When he reached before God, he said, I don't even want to reach I was learning that the grace of God teaches you to find yourself before you. In other words, you end up understanding yourself before you approach God. He who find the grace of God understand himself before he reach God. So he knows how to present himself. You can see this man when he reaches there. He said, Lord, I don't even want to come close there. Because I know I'm a sinner. 
be merciful to me. But look at this one. When you read it, he speaks in tongues. And confidently he was showing that. And that's what we are doing most of the time. When we approach God, we show that we are. And when we are weaned, we are like a person. We are not searching him. He who comes to God must seek him. That's what the Bible says. Believe that he is. And seeking him diligently. If you just come to God like you know him. You lose the grace that you need tomorrow. I don't know if you are hearing that. Whatever you come for God, to God is for you to move forward tomorrow. So you need the grace of God. So you need the grace of God. You don't need your ability. You don't need favor from people. You need favor from God. So let's, let's define the grace. Because most of the time we've been preaching about grace, grace. It's what God gives you which is enough. It's what God gives you and which is enough for If God gives you something, it's because of the grace. Because there are many people who are searching for it. But they could not find it. You know grace put in a position where it will be only God who is connected with you in that area. And you find that is the only one who blesses you in that way. So he gives you Enough. So you Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbors a grace. Shows that God gives you enough. So when you receive the grace, you have received enough that you need. The, when grace works on you, it brings what you need, which is from God. So, I was asking myself when I was hearing this message. I say, you know, because one time I went to Nigeria. And then when we went to the mountains of prayers, there was this mountain where I found people fasting for three months. Finish. These people can stand. But their prayer was, use me or else I die. So this man I was with, he said, can you so see this They've been here. And I said, these people, they don't understand the grace of God. It is not out of our ability. God can still use someone who has not even fasted. Can you tell someone the grace when you receive it? It's not because of the works you have done. God can still take someone who have not fasted. Can you see what grace does? Grace, you know, you can do everything to get something and you don't get it. But he will find grace and you find that he gets it in a very simple way. I don't know if you are hearing me. I want to explain what I'm talking about. All right, let's look at this verse. Maybe to help us. In Hebrews 4 verse 16. It says what? You must approach the Holy Throne. So that you find appropriate blessing coming in the time of need. 
In other words, when we approach the throne of God, we found grace so that we will be able to function tomorrow. What we are here for today is something that we have asked yesterday. So now you have been given grace to come here. You have been thinking about it yesterday. But by the grace of God, you have been carried to come here. So this scripture shows that when you approach the holy throne of God, you find grace which brings mercy also. So you find yourself having appropriate blessings. Just, just, read, just, read your just read in your Bible. It says what, Mama? Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace. Uh -huh. That is the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help us in time of need an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. Can you see Grace what it does? <laughs> There's a right moment. There's appropriate blessing. So when you approach the Holy Throne of God, it's to declare yourself that God can bless you by the time when you need this. There, there, there are things you are searching. You find them by the grace. I don't know if you are hearing me. I believe today you will receive grace. You will get things that people have fasted and are not getting there. You get things that people are trying to get them, but you get them easy. Because once you have got grace of God in you, it is easy for you to move forward. I don't know if you are hearing me. I see you moving forward. One of the things that, you know, makes us to confuse ourselves <inaudible> on the issue of the grace. Sometimes when we are in the grace, <inaudible> we end up sinning. Sin and grace, they don't come together. If you read this Bible, in Romans 6 verse 14, just read it in the Amplified Bible. Romans 6 verse 14, Baroma chapter 6, Rio it verse says, 14. For sin shall not any longer exact dominion over you. Since now you are, under, you are not under the law. Because you are not slaves of sin. You have received the grace. So sin, when it's there, it shows that you are under the law. So how We cannot talk about you have received grace. And whereas the sin, you know, when we talk about sin dominating you, you sin, you confess. You sin, you confess. Until, Until your conscience dies. Dies. Until you find that you are part of that sin. So now here, the writer of Romans says, is no longer part of you. Why? Because you have received grace. And this grace of God is working in you. In other words, when sin is coming to the side, the grace will take you from there. I don't know if you hear me. You know, when devil wants to trap you, the grace will move you out. You. The grace is always there for God to take you somewhere. When you are under the law, you do this, you are trapped here. But when you are under grace, 
there are things you won't do because Bona you know it's God who honors you. So the grace of God teaches us that we are led by God himself. And if we are led by God, we won't fight him. We won't bring things that he doesn't want. Listen to this. It takes the grace of God to make us to live a victorious life as Christians. Christians are supposed to live a victorious life. Life without sin. Not life of compromise. You know, when we teach about this, many people they don't understand what sin does. In Romans 3, verse 24, it says, All have sinned. Sin and continually. And they run short of the glory. In other words, they were not accepted by <laughs> God <laughs> to receive the grace. They were supposed to be having the grace <laughs> to be allowed to pass when others are stopped. All have sinned. Can you see sin what it does? It alienates you out of the will of God. It removes you to where God wanted to be. You find that the grace that you, you were supposed to be having is what, no longer there. What, 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 you see, listen to this. That's what sin is, does on you. Just trap you. And hold you like this. You find that the grace of God can work on you. Think about, think about you just lie. You cancel the grace. You remove the glory. And God now cannot do whatever He wants to do with you. Because, you know, grace is like a passport. It's like a passport. Where you are supposed to pass the border. Now, think about when you cancel that passport. So you can't move forward. So God has given you grace to move so forward. I see you moving forward. When other people are failing, I see you succeeding. If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. So if grace is affected, you can still move forward, but you won't reach there. You can still start a business that you will never enjoy. It's possible that you can just grow up, but you won't reach mature. So grace is there for you to enjoy what you started. Grace takes you there where God is leading you. When you are under grace, God can preserve you for His plan. He can preserve you here. When you are preserved, you are challenged. When you are preserved, you face whatever. Rejection or position. But always His plan, God's plan will be carried out. I don't know if you are hearing me. It can be tough to hear. Difficult to hear. You face shame here. But there's a reason why you are facing it. He can give you grace to preserve you. Okay. So that you must not see oh, what other people are seeing. Many people think what they are going through now. And others are excited as if, as if it's a blessing. God can allow you to see other people being blessed. So that you overtake all. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can I tell you this? What you are facing, God might have allowed it. If you are not sinning, you are under grace. And if you are under grace, you are about to overtake someone. If you believe, shout hallelujah. So you cannot just look at yourself 
and judge yourself when you are living right. As long as as your relationship with God is right. Tell yourself that I'm rich there. You need grace not to say. If you believe, say amen. amen. Let me show you these people. In Genesis 6, Genesis chapter 6, we read from 5 to 8. 5 to 8. Just Genesis 6. Genesis 6. From 5 to 8. 5 to 8. We, we find Noah. The total Genesis 1. Genesis 6. From 5 to 8. And Jehovah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Amen. That every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented Jehovah that he had made men on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And Jehovah said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the ground. Amen. Both men and beasts and creeping things and birds of the heavens. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of Jehovah. Amen. Can you just see when you, there are many people all over the world and you find that you are the only one that God sees that he has to give you grace. There, there are many things that when I was reading about Noah, I realized that God does not go by majority. God doesn't care how many people are you having who are standing with you. Because you can see here, he just decided to say, I've repented to meet these people. I'm, I'm sorry why I created everybody. What they think is evil. But there was this man only. This man, you know, the Bible shows that he found favor from Bible. Think about it. It's not issues of life and death only. When God looks down, He's still looking down and say, but this one. He doesn't go by majority. The whole church of Charis is going to happen. If he has killed all those millions. And all the animals that were there. And save only one house. This girl can still do the same thing. Of giving you grace. Alone. I don't know if you hear me. This is the same girl who can just say, I'm looking around, I can't see a man or a woman except Noah. Let me give him what other people cannot get. Can you see what grace does? When everybody is stopping here, grace moves you Tell me, when everybody is stopping, grace takes you forward. When everybody is supposed to die there, Noah was moving on with his life. God looked down and said, ah, Everybody is thinking of it here. Another one thinking about, hey, I'm angry because of that. Another one saying, hey, God is everything. And God is looking around and saying, and he's looking in chair, he said, but it's this one. When I look at this one, this, this one is the one I can take him for. If we can read the Bible it, from the beginning, God won't go by majority. Look when he went to a place where he found everybody, I mean, growing up in the house, in the house, of, of Jacob. And he just gave grace to Joseph. 
Look in the house of Eli when everybody Eli is enjoying sin. And he just says, but this boy Samuel. I can make him better than everyone. This God is not God of majority. Is God who look where you are not looking. We need his grace to reach somewhere. Tell him I need his grace. So I must live right. So I must live right. Look, this God has been like that from the beginning. He, he has been like that. He, he is God who will look around. And the Bible says his eyes are on the faithful. Always he is looking around to find whom he can give the grace. He found continually people are thinking. Even. Another one say, I want to be better than that. One. You know, people who have been thinking about each other. No one seek him. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot found favor. Even the wife, when she looked back, was saying, No, I don't care. You have done what, you have done what I didn't say. I say you must go there. You look back. You're not fit to reach that. Look at the desert where the Israelites are moving from Egypt to Israelites are moving from Egypt to Canaan. Who reached Joshua and Caleb? Who reached to who reached Canaan? Who had a history of what happened where they come from? It takes God to give you the grace. 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 It's not God of majority. It's God who sees in <inaudible> our hearts. Let me show you another scripture. I mean, Tell us about it, say, my friend. You need the grace of God. Do you need the grace of God? You need the grace of God. Let's read this verse. We will understand. In 1 Samuel 1 verse 18. Samuel 1 verse 18. You know, that's where Harna said... <clears throat> Let your handmaid find grace in your sight. And she went away from Eli. And his countenance was changed. You know, here you could see how she understood grace. When the Bible says, Penina was having children in a very easy way. But the husband was loving her. And to extend that, the husband will give double portion to give. But this could not change anything in the life of Hannah. But until she approached the man of God and said, I need grace. I need grace from this man. When she went to the altar, she began to explain and say, God, let me find favor from you. And when the grace was granted, even Eli could not understand and say, maybe this lady, she's drunk or crazy. But she said, I'm pouring my soul to you, God. And then later she says, let me find grace in your sight, man of God. I know the grace in your sight is the grace before God. If I can get it, I'll be able to conceive. When grace is in you, the ability of God began to manifest in your life for you to give birth to what is not there, which was declared zero in you. There are some people who are listening to me that from today, 
because of the grace of God that I'm feeling here you are about to receive something that nobody thought you receive it if, if you believe shout hallelujah allow me to tell you what I'm saying listen you need grace to be successful when people are saying you won't succeed you need grace to be promoted when no one say you won't be promoted whatever has been declared by men even if they can say it won't happen to you once you find grace it will happen in the name of Jesus I, I see grace is locating you. I see grace is locating you. Sometimes we need to question that. Why some people fast 40 days and 40 nights? Why why kona matacha i 40 le mashi wa ona? Still God rejected them. Le o lijo lo modi mano ba hana. Because it's not out of the first day that it will <laughs> take us forward. When God give us grace, <laughs> He will lead us to the right first day. <laughs> he won't make us to make too much. Because Jesus fasted 40 days. <laughs> 40 Even myself, I'm doing <laughs> that. Maybe then I will be a prophet. You can still do that. God knows your intentions. He knows that once you become a prophet, you are going to mess everyone around. Sometimes, you know, you can be given the grace. And so that this grace will humble you. If you want to see, look at the life of Paul. Who found grace. But having a problem. Who was sick. But healing people. To extend that he asked God. God I'm facing this. Can you take it away? But God will say, hey, my grace is sufficient. What you are, you are, you are facing is to humble you. Is to make you to seek him. To seek me all the time. You know, there's something that grace does. Once you receive it, you can move forward. But it's possible that you receive grace and you don't know it's grace. Like what happened to Paul? What happened to Paul was God was saying, you know, my, my, my grace is sufficient. He was also saying what you are going through it was supposed to have killed you but it makes you alive so use it as an advantage to do more what you are doing the challenge you are facing was supposed to be more worse than what you are facing but this is the grace for you to use the same challenge to I don't know if you are hearing me let me profess I see the grace locating you. I see the grace of God locating you. Grace can bring something that you are not expecting. If God, if, if God tells you, I say, you know what? You see what you are facing. I've given you grace so that you face them this way. You were supposed to be facing more than that. I don't know if you are hearing me. So, grace of Paul was can you see you've got a problem? This problem was supposed to be more. Remember. They took stones and stone him. And stone him. It might be the reason why the leg was injured. But the Bible says the disciples turned around him and he rose up. 
So grace of God. You can be given it and you find you are not aware of it. I don't know if you are hearing me. I'm seeing grace upon your life. I see grace upon your life. Listen, don't worry about what you are facing. It's part of the grace. The challenge you are facing is about to say bye-bye. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the trouble you are going through. The trouble you are going through might be a grace for you to maintain you for a season because of the plan of the living God. He has allowed it for a certain purpose. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask somebody to say, my friend, what are you facing? Listen. When you have the grace, speak things, you will receive them. Let me Many of us, we don't know that the Baba grace, grace, as long as we are living as life, long as we the grace of God need us to speak things and we will receive them. Let me, let, let, let me show you the last scripture. Do you have the grace? Are you sure you have the grace? I want to stop what I'm saying. Because I think I'm talking too much about myself. But I know I'm referring to someone I think I'm talking too much about myself. But I know I'm referring to someone. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Genesis 39, 1 to 6. Genesis 39, verse 1 to 6. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph. And he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. And he was in a house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in the sight and he served him as his personal servant. He made Joseph overseer over his house, and he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. It happened that from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house and put him in the charge over all that he owned, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. So the Lord bless blessings was on everything that Potiphar owned. I want to I want to tell you that. Take me like Joseph today. Allow me to be like your Joseph. Joseph, when he entered Potiphar's house, it shows Potiphar was struggling. You know, he had things, but he was struggling. But the moment he took over, I heard that Potiphar, Potiphar, what he was minding about was only food. He was no longer doing anything, he was just eating. This shows that it might have changed the shape of Potiphar. There was a lot of edification we in the life of Potiphar. The moment he entered there, the Bible said, God blesses Potiphar. Potiphar. He becomes rich. I don't believe that you people, if you understand the grace that God gives you, you people can stay poor. I mean, you are supposed to be rich. You are supposed to be blessed. If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that we are the ones to preach the gospel. And to preach the gospel to the poor. Because the gospel makes you rich. I don't know if you're hearing me. But listen to this. The moment Joseph 
enter the place. Joseph had said not to long it. Everything about Potiphar changed. Was blessed. He had everything he wanted. And Joseph was just running the business. And Joseph was just eating. Joseph was just eating. Yeah, na na no jafela. Eating. Ay jafela. You know, out of my my experiences, there are people that when you meet. Kamo tibong ya kera. Una leba chwa oko kope na lebona. Others they've got cursed and blessed. Ba oma na lebi chibi di chwa oko fish and chwa. You meet them, you go down. Others, you meet them, you go up. There are some people who carry the grace of God. I'm sure you understand that. Tell somebody, my friend. There are some people who carry the grace of God. You meet them, you go down. Or you meet them, you go up. 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 You know, the moment I found that I have the grace. I began to tell people, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. I have the grace. Listen to this. I want to say the same thing to you. By the grace in Charis, no enemy will be able to stop you. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Today I'm your Joseph. I'm your Joseph. I'm your Joseph. First Corinthians fifteen ten. Ma Corinthians ma pili chapter fifteen verse ten. But by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace towards me was not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all of the apostles, though it was not I, but the grace of God, His unmerited favor and blessing, which was with me. Okay, if you also read what happened to Joseph in, in Genesis 50, verse 23, verse 23, you see the grace, what it can do. Say, Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. Can you see that? And the children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were born upon the Joseph's knees. Can you see that? Even Machir had children. They were brought in front here. He saw children's children's children. Joseph lived 110 years. If we can check now, to reach 100 years in South Africa is a problem. I know why. I know why. It's because of sin. Once you find grace, you reach 100 years, you pass. 110. Even you see children's children brought there. And you just say this one. Look like my father. Oh. He, he, he lived fullness life. Look what happened to Moses. When he found grace. He lived to extend that his eyes was able to see. He had many years, but he, 120 years, but he still sees. If we can just see that How the grace more. makes us to reach where, where no money can work. More the grace. How well. It takes you to where money cannot you work. You see, sometimes people end up being used to you because Na of your situation. And God sometimes allow it Na to happen, happen that way to you. To you. They end up being used. And say you are ending up here. But I see the grace of God speaking for you. I see the grace of God speaking for you. In the name of Jesus.